What's up everybody, Trinity here. Welcome back to Second Street. Smash that like button and let's get right into today's video where we are talking about the Ten of Swords Chapter 9 or Excalibur issue number 13, whichever you prefer to call it. It's up to you. Let me know uh, down in the comments below. Uh, this is not a comic book review. We are going to be uh, going into this book, going into the story and kind of, you know, there's going to be full spoilers in this video. Now, this book opens up uh, we, it starts off at the Starlight Citadel, where we see uh, Jamie Braddock and uh, Brian Braddock arriving there on a couple of, on, <laughs> they're, they're arriving there on a couple of griffins, yeah. So, uh, they arrive there and they are met uh, by their sister, uh, Betsy Braddock here. Uh, she's there and uh, Brian Braddock is, you know, obviously they're trying to greet her and she's not too happy and... Um, she's asking what's this on his hip because he's got uh, his his sword with him which is the sword of might now if you've been reading all of like the Excalibur series so far you know what the sword of might is and how Brian Braddock got it and all of the, you know all the story behind that basically what happened was after he handed the amulet to uh, to Betsy Braddock she became uh, Captain Britain and then he was still the defender uh, at that time he still had the amulet he was uh, the defender of you know in, in other world of the, the kingdom of Avalon and he was serving uh, Morgan Le Fay at the time that's kind of what had happened there and uh, basically he relinquished that to her and anyway so he got back to the reg uh, to the re to the real world and he got faced with this challenge once again to either go for the amulet or the sword of might now to, to pick the sword of might is to basically say that you have failed the test of being captain britain and so there's i don't know so, like i won't confess to know a whole lot about that stuff that happened there but anyway that's how he got the sword of might and he asked uh betsy to take care of it and they ended up burying it and they go through a little bit of that here uh in the beginning of this story as she's sitting there saying look i don't want that sword you know because they they basically have to get the sword of might and then uh to you know for for the uh for the the tournament there uh for the ten of swords tournament that's going to be taking place there in other world they've got to get it to krakoa along with their warrior and she's saying that she don't want to take the sword, and that's about it. And uh, that's kind of what they're having here. And she, she, she just don't want to go there. She's saying, um, take the sword uh, back to Krakow and put it on the sigil. She's saying, basically, t take off. Uh, call me if you need me to get you through the gate, because Brian Braddock can't go through the gate to Krakow and get there. Anyway, um, so they're going through that, uh, through just some of this family kind of stuff. And he's uh, saying, like, look, I didn't come here to fight with you. I came here to thank you. She says, to, th uh, to thank me, as if this whole Captain Britain thing was simply a favor to you. And he says, it was. And when it was too, and when I was too angry and hurt to take the amulet in my hand again, you were there for me. But I'm ready now. So he's kind of saying that, hey, he's ready uh, to basically be Captain Britain again, or at least take on this uh, responsibility. But she's making him want to ask for it. And this is when um, Lady Saturnine uh, st steps in and is like, hey, like I asked you to come down here and greet them, um, not uh, not belittle them. And so she's she's uh, basically there. And uh, the one the other thing going on here is we see uh, that we see that uh, <laughs> we see that um, Jamie Braddock arrived uh, wearing the cape <laughs> that he got <laughs> that he got from Sinister uh, last week in Hellions issue number four. And then we get a little description here of the Sword of Might, uh, where it was forged, and these kinds of things right here. Um, it's the material is. Uh, it says it's unidentified ferrous alloy. It says place of origin is unknown. However, it is presumed to be from Galador, which is very interesting. And it goes into a little bit of the history here of of the sword of might and things like that. And um, just uh, just a little bit of these things here uh, re regarding that, because they're giving us a little bit of insight on all of these swords as we are getting ready uh, to prepare for this for this battle. This sword was uh, kind of put there uh, in this when when they were getting ready to choose a new Captain Britain by Merlin and um, his his daughter, uh, which was Roma. And we learned we learned about them a couple weeks ago when we were talking about uh, the different uh, just some of the kingdoms there of Otherworld, and and how they how they had kind of grown apart. Well, uh, here this was some of the tests that they put them through was with the, with the sword of might or the amulet. Now then uh, we see the Lady Saturn and then 
then takes them to this uh, to this little place here uh, that was it looks like the, a graveyard for uh, the Captain Britain Corps. And here's where she's kind of telling them, you know, they're, they're asking like, hey, why did you bring us here? Was uh, what, what was the point of bringing us here? And she's sitting there uh, talking to them. And uh, she's saying, well, we don't have a Captain Britain Corps anymore. And uh, she, this is where Captain Britain steps in and says, uh, actually, yeah, we do. And uh, <laughs> they're, they're talking about uh, when they had the tournament not too long ago when uh, Morgan Le Fay basically lost. And they, they got a new Captain Britain Corps here. And she says, since their loss, uh, the other world has lacked a core of true protectors. And this is where she steps in, uh, Captain Britain steps in and says, pardon me, your whiness, but we have a Captain Britain core. And, you know, Brian Braddock is like, we do? And she says, uh, this is uh, Lady Saturnine says, they are heretical and have been dealt with accordingly. This is where Captain Britain steps in and says, heretical, they may have been generated by Jamie's stupid games, but they're still captains. They have rights. Jamie's like a King Jamie <laughs> and uh, this is where Sat Saturnine says a tradition dictates that Captain Britain be given the choice the amulet or the sword the offer is made by Merlin or Roma once but no longer any captain who hasn't made the choice is unorthodox and must be declared rogue at which point they are held until I determine them ready to be destroyed and this is when uh, Captain Britain, she says, uh, B B Betsy Braddock, she says, that's ridiculous. I didn't have to make the choice. And Saturnine says, uh, your words, not mine. And um, this is pretty much where she, because she, she's basically telling her, like, you're not the official Captain Britain. This, no, you're not. And, of course, uh, Betsy uh, don't like that. And she, uh, of course, she storms off. And we see that Saturnine is then having a, uh, we see them having kind of a discussion with, uh, it sounds like, uh, with Jamie, with uh, King Jamie Braddock here. And she's, she's walking off, kind of going through this graveyard. And this is when Brian Braddock uh, come, meets her back there and kind of, uh, not really attacks her, but comes at her. And she draws her sword and she's there uh, ready to attack. And um, she she's ready to fight. And he's like, whoa, he's like, whoa, what's, what's going on? He's like, did that, did that uh, has Krakoa made you feral? He's like, what's going on with you? And because he's talking to her about the Captain Britain thing. He's like, I kind of did that as a favor. And um, she's sitting here. He says, um, I never expected, he tells you, I never expected to do this forever. And she says, did you ever consider that maybe I would want to? She says, it's an honor, not a birthright. And she says, uh, you're owed nothing. He says, neither are you, Betty. And this is when uh, we just see them, they're just going back and forth, uh, these siblings uh, having this battle. And uh, <laughs> Opal Luna Saturnine, as uh, she steps in and she's like, hey, uh, Brian, are you, are you going to have this settled and sorted out by the time dinner gets here? And you know, we, this is where we uh, see a little bit of a little bit of that battle. And then what we flash to uh, next here is we flash to uh, King Jamie Braddock, uh, who is there uh, in his quarters, uh, getting ready to go to sleep. And this is where um, you know he's he's t he's tucking in for the night. And then we get one of these uh, nice white pages talking about uh, the Captain uh, the Captain Britain Corps and just about what their purpose is. Uh, what the, what they do, what what they've what they've done, and uh, things like that uh, in the past. Uh, just w what their what their purpose and what their function is uh, here, and we also it also tells us again this is something that they've kind of reminded us several times uh, throughout this story about how Lady Saturnine is there now in the Starlight Citadel, which is basically the gateway to all these realities and what the Captain Britain Corps used to uh, used to protect, but with them no longer there. Her and her white priestesses are there protecting it, and that's what and that's what they're talking about here. And then we see uh, we see Betsy here, uh, kind of practicing out in the yard, you know, practicing her sword skills, I guess. And we see that the sword of might is once again laying there. But then uh, we see actually uh, that uh, Jamie is actually in his quarters as he was uh, trying to get sleep. That he was being attacked by the Captain Britain Corps uh, right there. Uh, they are there to try. And kill him and this is where we see everybody kind of arrive there and he's got them uh, he's got them all, all caught up in, in his magic you know he has the uh, he, he has just with his mutant powers uh, this is what he's doing is he's got uh, got them pretty much all handled and he ends up killing one of them uh, right here and of course naturally uh, they are upset uh, about that 
and uh, basically the Captain Britain Corps at that point they're pretty pissed off, so they they go after them. Um, after uh, after Jamie and all them, and uh, basically what's happening is Brian don't want to draw the sword of might in anger, otherwise he don't know what he's gonna turn into because uh, that's kind of the test. He failed that test, and now he has the sword of might. And he don't he don't want to do it because he don't know what he's gonna turn turn into, but he does it. You know how? Because Gambit ends up throwing uh, one of his cards here. Um, Captain Captain Britain uh, Gambit threw one of his cards. And it went and and it hit uh, the scabbard of of his sword of Brian Braddock's sword and making making him grab the the handle of the scabbard falls off and this is when he ends up becoming the protector of Avalon or which uh, Jamie uh, coins him Captain Avalon <laughs> and he's like I don't really care what you call me um, this is. Uh, <laughs> He's like, I'm here just to protect uh, my kingdom uh, and my family's kingdom. So don't, like, he's pretty much telling the, uh, telling the people to stop. Don't even mess around. And this is when uh, late Opaluna Saturnine ends up stepping back in. And she's like, hey, she's like, hey, calm down, calm down. She says, this is heresy. Put that ridiculous old sword of might down and take the fraudulent captains to the prison cells for me. And uh, this is what, you know, uh, Betsy replies that you can only hold them if you intend to give them a trial. That's how the core used to handle it. Right, Brian? And so uh, this is where Saturnine, she ends up taking the amulet uh, from, from, from Betsy Braddock right here. She takes the amulet back, basically taking back um, her Captain Britain powers. And she's like, she's like, oh, no, 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 no. And she uh, actually, she goes and she actually destroys it herself. She's like, oh, I can't have it. You're not getting it either. So, um, interesting. And they end up getting taken uh, into custody here. Uh, basically, is what happens with all these Captain Britons. They are there uh, kind of in lockup. And we see that um, Brian Braddock, you know, who is now Captain Avalon, is going, he's, he's going to escort uh, Opaluna Saturnine uh, to her bed chambers. We see uh, right here by the end. Uh, of of this pa of this panel here, so hmm, there's some interesting things going on here, and then we see that uh, Betsy is actually there. Uh, her and all the Captain Britain Court ended up getting locked up, and she's sitting there trying to telepathically uh, talk to them, and then they ended up uh, getting interrupted uh, by her brother Jamie, who says, "Hey, you know what? Jump out the window. Don't worry. I've got you. I got your back. Just jump out." And she's like, "I'm not going to listen to you." He's like. Just listen to me. Just jump out the window. So she ends up jumping out the window and and getting away uh, from uh, from from uh, getting out of the being held captive. And this is where we go uh, back into the uh, the room of Opal Luna Saturnine, where she we see that she is there uh, with Brian Braddock uh, sitting there, uh, tempting him, uh, talking to him about all of these different things about the kingdom and just what she what she wants to do and talking about how. Um, about the old amulet and how everything was going her way, everything going as she had planned. Um, even her uh, Betsy destroying the amulet, and this is where she goes into. She goes, um, she goes. That's just a relic from back when Merlin and Roma used used them to choose the captain. She goes, but now it's only me here in the Citadel. I don't need a choice, so we don't need that amulet. She goes. Now Captain Britain will be my knight. The Starlight Citadel itself contains the doorways to every reality. And now you will defend the Citadel and all of reality with a blade forged from its very walls. And this is where she is setting there, um, drawing out uh, this sword here. One of the swords that they need to enter the tournament. This is the Starlight Sword. And then we get one of these nice white pages that tells us all about it right here. You know how much I love these uh, white pages here. But then we see that he is sitting there. She's sitting there talking to him about the plan. She says, I'll leave behind the Sword of Might and take what is yours, Captain Britain. And he says, he says, and he goes up and he cuddles up to her and he says, I would love nothing more. And while they are sitting there uh, getting ready uh, to get it on, this is where we see that Jamie, we see that Jamie and Betsy are there uh, getting ready to swoop in and take and take the starlight sword is exactly uh, what happens. And this is where um, she, you know, she basically gets the starlight sword and Opal Luna Saturnine is trying to say, hey, what's going on here? Like, this is my game. I set this up. What are you doing here? She goes, I set these prophecies 
And this is where Betsy basically tells her, like, hey, uh, when you set those up, those prophecies up, you basically expected my brother to play into those. And and he didn't. We knew what you were going to do. And, you know, and so, yeah, no, uh, sorry. And plus, he's a married man. So, you know, he's really just playing all into this. You're, you were a fool to think this was going to go your way. And um, she said, and she just walks away, tells him, well played. She goes, I look forward to another round. And then um, this is uh, when we see them get back to Krakoa and they uh, get back uh, to the sigil uh, with their swords. And now we are only left with a handful of swords left to bring back to Krakoa and to this sigil. So uh, a lot of things going on here. You know, we've got a couple of more swords added to the sigil, getting ready to go into the Ten of Swords tournament. And, you know, I guess that's probably getting ready to happen here in the next couple of weeks. Whole lot of things going on. That's all we've got um, in this issue. Uh, guys, let me know what your thoughts are are on this issue if there's anything i really missed i mean um a lot of this is really just kind of backstory and things right here i can guarantee you in the next issue uh chapter number 10 which is x-men issue number 13 there's a lot more things to speculate on here we're here we're only getting a lot more kind of background information things setting this up in case you haven't been reading excalibur this is what you is really going on you're just kind of getting caught up on a lot of that story and things going on for people who have been paying attention to that but have been paying attention to the ten of swords because i know not everybody is reading all of these books but let me know all your thoughts and theories down in the comments below that's all we've got for today's video thank you all so much for being here today again i am trinity thank you all for hanging out with me here on the second street marvel if you're not already please make sure you're subscribed click the little bell and all of that good stuff consider subscribing you know do all just do all that stuff give this video a thumbs up give it a thumbs down if you don't like it it's okay i totally understand you don't even have to leave a comment why but while you're at it make sure that you share it with your friend and invite them to come hang out with us here on the second street marvel you all have a very good day and we'll see you in the next video Later.